Do you like speed? The automotive kind. Well, if you do, but you don't have a lot of money, Kelly Blue Book is here to help. While testing for our annual Best Buy Awards, we gathered a diverse octet of performance cars. In the end, the Hyundai Veloster N snagged Kelly Blue Book's 2019 Performance Car Best Buy Award, but the exercise produced more than just a winner. We also learned the strengths and weaknesses surrounding today's most affordable sports cars. Strap in, we're going to knock this out in fast, alphabetical fashion. Wait, let's get crazy and go reverse alphabetical. First up, V for Volkswagen. The Volkswagen GTI remains the quintessential hot hatch. Its practical golf body is sportily toned with a turbocharged engine, retuned suspension, an electronic limited slip differential, and in our car, a six-speed manual transmission. Add sport seats and optional adaptive dampers to the mix, and you get a strong foundation on which to build a house of fun. On public roads, our GTI's all-season tires and comparatively soft suspension resulted in duller responses to driver inputs than, let's say, the Honda Civic Type R. At the same time, that mellower nature makes the GTI a wise choice for owners who drive tarmac that isn't laid along mountain roads and racetracks. Speaking of, our GTI experienced an engine issue at the track, not our fault, that pulled it out of contention before we could really wail on it. Maybe next time, GTI. Before you ask, yes, the Subaru competing here should have been a WRX STI. We tried, we really did, but an STI simply wasn't available. Instead, we made do with a standard WRX. Well, not quite standard. This car came with a $3,100 Series Gray package featuring Recaro seats, performance brake pads, and this all-important spoiler. With its 268 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder and all-wheel drive, the 2019 WRX has ample power and no issue putting it to good use. However, when turning or braking, the Subi struggled. We noticed more lean in corners and dive when braking than the rest of the pack. That sloppiness sapped our confidence when trying to hustle at top speed. But if we ever create a Best Gravel Stage Performance Car Award, and who knows, we just might, the Subaru WRX will probably top the list. Better yet, make it an STI. Ah, the Mazda MX-5 Miata. When I say sports car, this little guy may have come to mind. Beyond slick styling and easy access to wind and sun, the MX-5's prime appeal is how it steers. Balanced, grippy, the Miata responds gleefully to steering and throttle inputs. It has this wonderful behavior where, when cornering quickly, adding throttle assertively can help tighten your line. To be clear, I'm not talking about a full-on drift, just a helpful tuck of the nose. Even with a bump in power for 2019, Mazda's Roadster lacks accelerative punch. But pure power has never really been the point now, has it? The Miata has always been cozy, impractical, and slow in straight lines, but its joy-centric handling and open-air charm trigger bliss more effectively than damn near anything on wheels. All those traits are retained and amplified in the fourth generation Miata. If you want to see us heap praise on the Hyundai Veloster N, we've already produced an expertly hosted video review and a charmingly voiced comparison test between it and the Honda Civic Type R. I promise there's less self-congratulation on my part in both those videos. Anyway, we'll keep this quick. The front-wheel drive Veloster N is a riot on the track. Its asymmetrical body and hatch are just practical enough for daily driving. It looks aggressive, but not too aggressive, and its driving behavior can easily be adjusted from racetrack raucous to real-world workable. That might be too many R's for a single sentence. What about the downsides? Well, at the moment, the Veloster N is only offered with the six-speed manual transmission, making it a no-go if you can't row your own gears. We've also noticed that in the sportiest N mode, ride quality is laughably harsh. Luckily, Hyundai makes it easy to customize suspension settings. If we were buying, we'd definitely spring for the $2,100 performance package, which adds an electronically controlled limited slip differential, larger brakes and tires, and increases horsepower from 250 to 275. When measuring performance per dollar, the Hyundai Veloster N is an outrageous value, enhanced by Hyundai's 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. Oh, and it sounds like this. Neat, huh? Another way to lay down sweet lap times is the Honda Civic Type R. Like the Veloster N, the Type R puts its superior output to the ground through the front tires. Built from the intensively pragmatic platform of a Honda Civic hatchback, 
the four-seat Type R provides hatchback usability, strong resale values, and the promise of renowned Honda reliability. To that pile, the Type R adds a full wardrobe of go-fast additions, three mode dampers, a limited slip differential, four-piston Brembo front brake calipers, and clingy Continental summer tires. We, we mean clingy in the good way. Driven assertively, the Honda Civic Type R is a powerful tool. The engine thrives at lofty revs, steering inputs are met with precise amendments to trajectory, and the chassis is tuned to be both playful and wickedly capable. And this is where we cue the Type R drifting shot from our review for like the 56th time. That's fun. Where negatives are concerned, the Type R might be too serious for daily use and perhaps a touch intimidating for novice track drivers. Meanwhile, its sassy design might be a bit outlandish for those of us who are trying to quote, adult. Style aside, the Honda Civic Type R is an amazing performance car value, provided you don't park it right next to the Veloster N. This Ford Mustang greeted us packing a 2.3-liter four-cylinder engine, a $1,600 10-speed automatic transmission, optional Magna Ride dampers, a 355 to one limited slip differential, and 19-inch summer tires. In total, a compelling package. Sure, driving an automatic at the track might seem sacrilegious, but when the left foot clutch dance is removed from the equation, the driver can really focus on that whole braking and steering thing. In a closed course environment, the Mustang proved to be quick, approachable, and drama-free. Applied to the streets, those traits create a performance car that feels fun and refined. You're right, the back seats are cramped, and a Mustang does sound best with a V8 under its hood. But for balanced, livable performance, this is a well-trained pony. If you've seen our Battle of the American Sports Cars video, you will recall that I, the disembodied voice of Kelly Blue Book's Mike Amusio, shared a unique bond with this Dodge Challenger RT. Within the closed confines of this racetrack, I discovered that when equipped with a 5.7-liter Hemi V8, a six-speed manual transmission, and a $1,500 performance handling package, the Challenger is a charmingly driftable plaything. Is this how you lap quickly? No. Do I care? No. If you forget bragging rights and just focus on fun, there are delights to be discovered flinging around a big old Challenger. Take those traits home with you, and you'll enjoy a comfortable ride, neoclassical good looks, and seating for five, though it'll be a cozy five. Fun comes in many shapes, and this is one of my favorites. And finally, we end at C for Chevrolet Camaro. Orange, black hood, 3LT trim with the 1LE track performance package, 20-inch wheels, Brembo brakes, FE3 performance suspension. Uh, I'm just naming things, aren't I? I'll stop that and get to the gist. Our test Camaro was a tasty shot of American adrenaline. Primary complaints are what you'd expect, awful outward visibility and a cramped interior. But in motion, our Camaro felt balanced and planted on both street and track. Aiding that balanced feeling was an unexpectedly satisfying two liter turbocharged engine that's lighter than the base V6, but delivers more torque. In the right environment, the Camaro's expertly engineered chassis delivers serious speed and confident handling. You know, naming the best sports car is like naming the best food. It really depends on what you're in the mood for. Where Kelly Blue Book's performance car best buy honors were concerned, we chose Korean barbecue. Man, I love Korean barbecue. But whatever your taste, there is an accessibly priced performance car to suit. If, before committing to one of those performance cars, you'd like help digging through the pricing and car research details, Kelly Blue Book is happy to help. 